Welcome, followers of the channel. This is Phil Beck with the professional painter and decorator, the YouTube sensation. Are we at 5,000 subscribers yet, or thereabouts, or we just turned, I don't know, when you're watching this, it's probably weeks since I was actually filming it. Anyway, you've got the series of flat renovation videos. And um, I'm coming back to you with, um, oh, I'll say another part to it. The last time you saw me, I was doing the bedroom and I'm um, quite happy with the bedroom, but we had, um, I'm the first one to put my hand up and say I'm not happy with something. Right, we did the bedroom, did the anti-reflex on the ceiling. Quite happy with that, other than it was the paint that I'd used for spraying and it needed three coats. Learned my lesson on that, I've got a marker pen and I've actually marked up on the top of the lid that that's a spray um, paint because it was already thinned. Did the walls, did that um, Phil Beckwith special of two colours and a third colour mixed together and I'm quite happy with that, um, well, let's say Optiva 5 light buffer. You'll see it when we come to the sweep of the whole um, video at the end, at the very end. But quite happy with that, just neutral pastel colours. Woodwork, put a coat of one, two, three on because it was going over the oil eggshell that was previous and I gave it two coats of WRX eggshell, water-based. When it came back in the cold light of day and I looked at the woodwork finish, do you know what? I don't like that flat eggshell finish. It was too flat for me. It didn't seem to have looked to have covered very well, even though I know we were going over, you've seen the color that we've going over on woodwork, gardenia. It's had a one, two, three, and it's had two coats of dual R8. That, surely that should have covered really nicely for two stroke, three coats, but it hadn't, and I didn't like the flat finish of it. So what I've done this morning before we've come on at air, I'll say before we went live, I've done, I've gone down. So that was my WRX eggshell. And luckily I'd got a sample pot of satin wood and I've just gone over everything with a coat of satin wood in that bedroom just to give it that bit of a sheen. I'm not saying to be more hard wearing, but I think for a rental property like this is going to be, I don't think a flat finish is really going to be conducive to it. So um, that's what I've done for the first half an hour um, this morning and gave it a coat of satin wood just so it's got a bit of a sheen to it. It looked too flat. Some areas you might want to use a flat finish, but in that bedroom, it didn't, I didn't like it. I've been doing it when I've been losing the light. I didn't like it. That said, let's move on to what we're doing today. Right, let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, before we get into that, big thanks to all the people that are giving me um, the super thanks. You know that button that's down at the bottom of these, the screen you see across there? across the bottom, people are actually pressing that super thanks, which means a lot. I'm not gonna burst into tears with excitement and joy of it, but it does sit well, but seriously, it does mean a lot to me because it means people are actually liking the content that I'm putting out. And um, you know, that little bit of money that you send me does help me go towards paying that monthly subscription that I'm paying to Adobe for video editing software. So that said, um, I'm thanking you very much. The next one I want to say is, I, I'm hoping it's females that are, are touching base with me and asking me the question whether I'm going to the gym and why I'm looking to buff all of a sudden. Well, that might be because I'm holding my stomach in a bit better than I've normally held it in, but... I don't think, I don't think it'll look any buffer. I'm hardly the idea. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hardly Chris the Idaho painter. Uh, obviously, he's got more time on his hands to go to the gym than I have. It's not me, but thank you very much for passing comment. It's probably the way these cut of the shirts are. But, yeah, thanks very much. I like, like comments like that. Thank you. Right, let's get on to today. I'm going to keep it simple. Today, we're in this front entrance passage. I'm still waiting on my plumber. I'm still waiting on my kitchen, so I'm just having to bring things forward. Now, in this entrance hall passage... You've seen it before. I'm going to put some panelling in. Not today. I've got from b q it's the modern wall kit. And it's the panelling that will go around the bottom. So in effect, like a dado rail and then the shaker style panelling. That will be on another video. That's not today. So if you are interested in knowing how to do um, panelling, 
please subscribe, press that bell and you'll see that video when it comes up. Um, but that's, that's probably next weekend I'll do that. But for now, I want to bring these ceilings forward, usual prep, and hopefully, probably if I've got time, I might do that in the week, I'll start bringing the wall colour down. I know it's not going to be a finished wall colour because I've got panelling to do and I want to bring the panelling painting, but just to get, just to get moving a bit on this project. But in this area, um, Bedek, after seeing them at the show, decorating show last year, um, sent me a sample can. So, you know what, I'm using this project as trying sample cans in the real world environment. Now, you've seen the thumbnail, it's that spray daylight, bright white, um, for ceilings, interior ceilings and walls, it's a pain. But, let's just read the can, it's water-based, high opacity, quick drying, low flashing, so we don't want any flashing marks, non-yellowing, breathable, low odour and wipeable. Now I thought in this entrance, which isn't very big, because they only sent me two and a half, so I couldn't do loads of ceilings with it, I thought this might be an ideal opportunity to do this ceiling, two coats and see what it's like. Unfortunately, I haven't got enough to go all the way through. I don't know what you can see, can we go over there? All the way through in there, into the main hallway. But what I have got in there, and we're gonna do a bit of a comparison, Thanks to Mike from um, Decorating Forum UK, he managed to get me some vouchers to try out Valspar. Now, I don't want everybody laughing thinking Mickey Mouse paint. Now, my father remembers Valspar from years, years back when Noah was painting, building his ark. Um, but Valspar trade, they're trying to break more into the trade market, and I'm going to use their vinyl mat on the ceiling in there and the slopey ceiling going down and we'll just see how it is. Let's see if it flashes. It's obviously not going to be a hard wearing finish like a scrubbable mat but I have got their product to use on these walls and I have got their product to use on this panelling. So it'll be an interesting one won't it? So without further ado, do, do, pan, boo, pew, pew, bon, and grew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. I don't think that used to be good. Did you used to watch that? How old are you? Camberwick Green. And what was the other one? Windy Miller. Trumpton. There was Trumpton, wasn't they? Yeah. Oh, by the way, right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, um, you're not going to see me doing this because you saw it on the last video for prepping. These walls have been colour washed that I did 16 odd years ago over um, Mac Contract Emulsion. I like colour washing. It's, a, it's another skill to you. Uh, arsenal of skills when it comes to painting and decorating but these don't need that big sanding down keying it down like we did with the bedroom because that had vinyl silk on these walls will just be prepped rake out any cracks just the usual rake out any cracks dust off i will use the worker laros just to go over the walls just to nib them down but they're not bad they're actually quite good to go just to scrape and a sand and they should be all right but i have got a laros to use Ceiling the same, I'll just go around the angles, I don't know whether you can see anything in there. There are a few little hairline cracks, I'll just rake out, mainly because it's probably a new build. Um, well, going back years ago it was a new build. Rake them out, sand them once they're filled and things, but I'll just go around everything, make sure it's alright, then paint the ceilings, try and get two coats on that today, and then I'll drop on the walls uh, when I come back for another one. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get this all painted out as far as I can, prior to putting um, panelling in and um, when you see me next we'll put this video together so you can see it from me doing this now to actually seeing something at the end of it. Oh, it makes sense, I'm gonna, gonna crack on, right? See you later, see you later. Hiya, we're back. I'm getting ready to get some paint out for that front entrance. Now when I left you, I was doing all the prep. I've um, scraped out, raked out, popped off any nail heads, sorted those out cleaned down, made sure I went over, I've used, uh, I don't know you can see it there, I've got peel stop, which I mentioned that I'd used actually in the bedroom, but I didn't, I just touched in with a bit of emulsion paint over anything that was filling, but in that area and then this passageway just behind me, anything that's just flaked off paint-wise round door frames where corks come away, I've literally just ran around with a brush and the brush that I've used is one of the Prodec 
you know, the Dirty Dozen, it's just an inch brush, uh, they were cheap. So, as I say, I've got no washing facilities, I'm just wrapping them up in a polythene bag and taking them home with me. But that Pro Deck brush was ideal for just spot priming with peel stop, Zinter peel stop. Now, I've got out, we're gonna get painting in that front entrance because I've done all the filling, that's dried. Uh, it's very minimal nibbing down. I've got a little bit of some, fine sandpaper in my pocket for that. So I'm ready to paint in the front entrance and I want to get a coat on today and then I want to leave it till tomorrow to give it a second coat. Now, I'm not going to show you painting because you've seen painting, but what, what I do want to do is tell you what the paint's like when I apply it or when I've applied it. And then obviously when I come back, I want to give her an overall view of what it's like for the second coat, has it covered for two coats, but also the, I mean, when it says low flashing, low flashing. Well, we don't want it like a Belisha beacon. I'll put some graphics in with that. Low flashing. That front entrance isn't a big area. I'm going to go back to the basics. I'm going, I'm going to use Eco Union brush. I'm going to brush that ceiling. And do you know why I'm going to brush it? One, because I don't want to be getting a roller out to wash it out. But also it's not a big area. And I want to see what it's like when I come back tomorrow and see, does it flash if I brush that ceiling? Method to madness. Method to madness, that's what you're gonna say. And depending on what it looks like, because I know I'm going over contract mat, which might give me a little bit of flashing because that contract mat will be soaking in the paint. I'm gonna see what this is like if I brush all that ceiling. So that'll mean the second coat. If it looks atrocious, I will go over it with a roller just to even it all up. But let's cross that bridge when we come to it. What I want to know is how good is this spray daylight paint from Bedek? I'd like to spray it, but I'm not, for these little areas, I'm not bothering with getting the sprayer out. But no, let's crack on. I've just got the paint out. It feels a bit gel, not jellyfied, but feels quite thin in the tin mixing it up. Feels quite thin. The smell. We like Bedek because it's proper acrylic based paints. That smells like an acrylic base, so as we know, water based. I'm going to tip it out. I've got the, you know, Optima 5, little 2.7. These are brilliant as a, a paint bucket just to hold paint in. Just tip a bit out and work out one of these. Clean it all out so it's dry. I'm going to. Get this paint out, I've mixed it up now, make sure you go down the sides of the tin, make sure nothing's in it, stir around the bottom. I see a lot of people they're using the mechanical whisks. My only fear with that is, one, you don't get into the corners like you can do with a proper mixing stick. And also, do you pour a little bit too much air into that paint mixing it? Mm, makes you wonder. Anyway, nice brush. Always work out, I always tip out from the back of the painting. So there's the front, there's the back. I'm tipping about a third out, I'm working with a third of the paint. I'll just splash the carpet. Right, when you see me next, I'll coat that ceiling up. In trouble now. OMG everybody, OMG. I've just got the first coat on and I needed to get on camera before I forgot the things I wanted to tell you. That went on a dream. It felt quite thin mixing it up because I said it was um, quite smooth when it, you know, when I whipped it up. Applying it, it was like warm, warm butter. I'm going to say warm butter. It went on. It went on beautifully. Um, the white. Well, they say <laughs> daylight. It's a lovely white. I can see where I was going over that contract matte white, which is obviously a little bit grey. But this has gone on fantastic. My only problems I've had around these reveals, which are brushed. I don't know whether there's something on it. The cheap contract matte. There was areas just up there started bubbling up. Well, I got my scraper, scraped it off, um, a little bit of a slight sand, 
and I've just touched it in as I went round. What I'll do before I leave tonight, I'll just probably give it light sand, I'll float it out of any mapping, you know, where the paint edges just broke away, just to float it out so it's dry for tomorrow, and then I'll touch it in, sand it and touch it in tomorrow before I put a second coat. And just the same over there, I'm pointing to that, yeah, you can see it on there. That wasn't a problem area until I got some paint on it. And again, I talk about false, a false opacity paint. And you're gonna go, what are you on about? Fill false, false opacity paint. Yeah, it might cover well. I'm on about contract matte and certain cheaper brands of paint. They might cover well, and they might cover for virtually one coat. Well, they probably do cover for one coat, but you know, if you spray it with water and get it wet again, what does it do? It reverts back to its original form, and it goes very soft, because it's, it's probably chalky. It's very, the pigments in it and stuff, the binders and extenders, and the oils, in, in inverted commas, when you make up paint, they bulk it out with the cheaper stuff, and so you get moisture of a nice quality paint like this Bedek. It goes into it and it softens it up, and that, in that corner just there, was bubbling up the paint off the plaster. That also could be that when they wash coated it, what are you on about wash coat? I don't even think they have wash coated it. I can remember coming into this flat because I bought off plan, and I walked around, it's diverting <laughs> to the conversation. I walked around in here, and you know where you're supposed to do one wall at a time cutting in? They'd rolled all the walls with no cutting in. And now I've gone around with the Merca sander, I can see heavy, fatty edges of roller marks all around the top where they just rolled and left it. That's by the by. But I'm putting quality paints on now, so we're trying to get as good as we can. But like anything, our paints, when we're a pro decorator, or if you're a DIYer, you're only as good as the paints that you're going over. And that's where sometimes you've got to weigh up where the paints have got to come off for you to get that better finish. And you're gonna say, what do you mean coming off? Certain doors, they might need burning off, really sanding back. Stuff might want scraping all the way back, but that's that's something you weigh up on the t at the time when you're doing the job. But no, it can be very tricky. It's not easy being a painter. It's not easy being a decorator. It's even harder being a specialist painter and decorator. Thankfully, I'm here to guide you along the way. Right, see you tomorrow. I'm gonna to, um, let this dry, do me touching up. I'm gonna go back into that passageway there. I'm gonna get filled up, ready for tomorrow as well. And on another video, I'm gonna do the Valspar vinyl mat on the ceiling. And I'll see what that's like, and then we can do a review of the two. But going off how good this paint is to apply, I think this is gonna go on a dream tomorrow as well. Let's just, fingers crossed, I've brushed it. You know whether you're good or not, don't you, when you can brush a ceiling. It's not easy if you don't know what you're doing with a brush. There's an art to brushing a ceiling. But we'll see what it's like. Will I see any flashing? Will I see any brush marks, i.e. flashing? It'll be interesting to see, but I think that's gonna go on a treat. A treat for the second coat, because it's that wipeable finish. It's not dry. See you tomorrow. Morning everybody, I'll say morning everybody because you've just blended in from yesterday to today. Right, I wanted to leave that Bedek paint on this ceiling overnight to dry to see what it was like because it's not fair to um, make an assessment straight away after you've just put it on. So I have left it overnight. I mean drying time, it's probably touched dry in about an hour. Drying it probably even quicker than that depending on the airflow and your heat. Uh, probably recoat time, I'd probably say 45 hours, but um, let's leave it next day, which I did do. So, here next day, <sighs> God, confession to me, I did have to come back last night because I left my brushes that needed washing out, and I've told you I've got no water. So, I did come back last night and I did see it uh, a few hours later. I have to say how impressed I am with this paint. I couldn't see any flashing with these lights that came. I don't know, you can see these lights. Bit industrial lights in this passageway, just this bit here. Um, these lights were very critical for how bad the plastering was, particularly in these angles, you know, the curve from ceiling to the slopey, slopey wall ceiling. Um, very critical on that. I can't see it this morning. And when I came in through the front door, which is behind the camera, 
looking across the ceiling didn't didn't show any imperfections which is good i also last night and this morning and i'll look again i can't see any flashing i know it's extreme when you've got to look across a ceiling on an angle like that or a wall normally as paint reps would say to you Look at it straight on, what does it look like? If it looks all right, you're on a winner. But the telltale signs that I, as a professional, would look for for flashing, I can't see any. This paint's really good. I'm going to even say, if I'd got enough paint, I would be doing the ceilings in there as well. But if not, I've only got two and a half litre sample can from Bedek, which will only just really do me this and just leave me out. I don't know, 300 mil, half a, half a litre of that in the bottom of the tub. It's probably taken two litres. That is brilliant. It went on nice for the first coat over that cheap contract emulsion. Where I've had to, because I told you about where the filler and there was paint bubbling from that cheap contract around these Veluxes, where I had to scrape that off and touch in, re skim with a little bit of filler, let it dry, sand down, and touch back in again. It felt like it was going on beautifully. Another thing I'll, I'll just mention, when I did leave last night, well, just before I left, anywhere I could see any filler showing because it was a bit grinning, i.e. don't want to use the word flashing, but where I knew the, where the filler was, with the brush that had got after wiping out, <coughs> losing my voice, where I was wiping out the tin, I just flashed over with a brush just to um, give that extra coat. So this morning when I come, I'm not having to touch it in this morning. So. It did seem to go on really nice on itself and I've got my paint out down here now and I'm going to give it another coat so I'm not going to waffle on anymore for you I'm going to give it another coat and you can oh you can see what I've done here I've gone down because that's what I came back for last night while I needed my brushes just measuring up how high I wanted that shaker style paneling stroke dado rail stroke chair rail whatever you want to call it I'm looking at from the floor height, concrete floor, peeled the carpet back. I've measured a meter up, thousand um, millimeters, hundred centimeters, and I'm going to gauge it at a hundred uh, centimeters straight a meter. Whether I go to that line and above or that line and below, I've got a feeling the bottom of the rail will be on the on the line. Let's get painting. There we have it. Let's go OMG. How impressed am I with this paint? How impressed? Uh, I know before we just do the conclusion and the um, shakedown of what my thoughts were, the ceiling paint, it's been, well, it's been, been done a bit now, second coat. It's nice and dry. Oh, I've got paint on me. It's nice and dry and um, it went on really nice. I'll do my conclusion now then. It dried off really quick as you're putting it on. Now, the purpose of this video, I brushed it because I wanted to see what it was actually like brushing because it's the brushing that can create flashing. And this says low flash, low flashing. You can't get anything worse than brush marks and brushing a ceiling and a wall for flashing. So I've given it a go. I've used my skills as a skilled brush person to brush a ceiling and these slopey, yeah, you see them there, slopey walls down. And uh, it went on, went on a dream. It did dry off quick and there was, cast the light over it so you could see your wet edge. There wasn't a big difference between the dried paint and the wet paint for actually seeing the contrast to know where you were working. I think you understand me on that one. Some paints you can see when it's dry, it's slightly different color. This was, pure white going on as it was when it was dried and it is a brilliant white not brilliant as in color i mean it does probably say brilliant white on it i'm saying brilliant as in fantastic awesome <sighs> get your knickers in a twist you know what i mean it went on really nice 
don't want to give negatives because it's not really a pain to want to give negatives on but I did notice when I went around just giving a D-nib on some of these reveals because we got issues I think there's probably a bit of damp coming in off these Velux windows um, I did use my fa fine you know what I like I like just for nibbing down it's a 240 Merca Gold Flex just to nib anything down the only negative side to this I could see was went very powdery like a contract uh, emulsion would do but it didn't feel like a contract matte emulsion applying it or particularly the finish I don't I don't want to rub my hand over it. my hands are dirty and I don't want to put dirtiness over clean paint but on that note I'd actually say it's really nice the other thing I did was a brush around these reveals I did put it on a little bit heavier and brushed it out just to see how it flowed out and it wasn't bad you can still see the brush marks in it um, because it is brushed but on the whole I don't I don't think they're too bad if you're into going around with a little roller you'll go around with a little roller and lose them anyway but for this purpose I wanted everything to be brushed and it's gone on really well um, we are gonna wind this up now if I'd got more of this I would use it on the rest of the property I haven't and I've probably got feeling that I'm about there. I'd say I'm about there. So I've just used over half of a two and a half litre tin. I've not got enough, unfortunately, for the ceilings in there. But price-wise of this, how does this compare to everything else? Depending on where you're buying it from, a five litre can of this, between about 40 to 50 quid. So I would say probably a two and a half, well, it's not quite half, they probably price maybe a little bit more. It might be 30-ish pounds for a two and a half litre, 25 to 30. Just check your suppliers, um, ProMain sell it, which are all now part of Paintwell. I think you can get it on Amazon, obviously, um, places like, well, Paintwell, Paintwell will do it. Uh, can you get Bedek from, uh, you can't get it from Dulux, you won't get it, you might get it in Brewers, uh, places like that, I just, just check, but Amazon, if you're struggling, you probably get it on Amazon. Really good paint. It doesn't need thinning. That went straight out the tin and I brushed it. I think if you were going to be using it for an airless sprayer, um, you wouldn't need any water in that. That is thin enough to spray with the right spray tip. If you're going smaller on your spray, tip, spray tips, you would probably thin it a bit more. Um, rolling it, just make sure you get the right roller because I think if you had a longer pile, you'd sprint, get little sprints over everything because it is quite, it is quite thin. But the opacity, stroke coverage, you know what I'm like, it has actually covered quite nicely. I did spot prime that filler in again and any marks on the ceiling, I can't see anything. So the opacity coverage, trying to keep it in layman's terms, has actually covered really nicely. And as a white, it says bright white on it and it is a bright white. So thanks for listening to me. It's not sponsorship, no endorsements, nobody's gave me any money for saying how good this is. It was a free can that was sent to me to try out and this is real world environment trying it out on a property that will be a rental and long term wise it'll be interesting to see how it stands up. Going forward you know I'm doing more videos because they're all in this series and I'm going to try all the paints on ceilings. I've already used the anti-reflex too in the bedroom which we like anti-reflex too but do you know what if we got more of this all the ceilings would quite possibly be painted in it. It's, it's really nice. It's whether the price puts you off if you're going for a cheap contract white matte emulsion. I don't know. Watch those videos there. There'll be something relevant to you and there'll be a playlist. So thanks for listening to me. Really nice paint. Thank you, Badet, for letting me try it. Um, you know I like the Badet products. They are nice. Proper acrylic. Videos, videos. See you on the next one.